Libra King here. Are you a sub organ asking yourself how someone like you can become as big as me? Then let me tell you about the nine ancestral tenets. A totally natural lifestyle. Okay, we're not doing that. But if you wanna know how to tank like a boss, this is the guide for you. Hey everybody, welcome. This is a complete build guide for the Ogryn, using what in my opinion is the highest impact build for that class. This is a full tank build, so if you want to feel like a juggernaut that hardly takes any damage, or you want to play as a dedicated tank for your team, this is the build for you. It also has very nice damage, so it's not going to feel like you need your teammates to get anything done. It's very, very strong. The strength of the build is controlling the battlefield by taunting and staggering enemies and tanking for your team. You also debuff enemies to take more damage, making your entire team around you stronger. If you played something like a tank in World of Warcraft, you should feel right at home with this build. We also have ways to deal with all enemy types, even specialists, with a kickback gun. And overall, this build is just very well rounded. The way we deal damage is by using heavy attacks and by applying bleed. We also use our gun as a giant club we swing around in certain situations situations, like to clear out hordes while shooting at priority targets at the same time. This is the highest impact Ogryn build in the game and it feels really, really strong. We use the shield as the melee weapon and for the ranged weapon I recommend the kickback, but you can also use the Rumbler grenade launcher if you really want. One of the main weaknesses of Ogryn is its size and low mobility, which makes you a giant target for ranged enemies to shoot at. Unlike other classes, you can't slide or hide behind cover very effectively to avoid being shot. The shield solves all of our problems here. If you played the game at launch, you might remember that the shield allowed you to block melee and ranged attacks, but didn't offer much extra utility. This has changed since the big gameplay overhaul, and the shield ended up receiving a substantial buff. First, the ability to taunt enemies didn't exist before, and now that we can actually taunt enemies, we can play Ogryn like an actual tank, and take aggro from our allies. Taunt also helps us clear all these annoying ranged grunts that tend to shoot you from all around the map. Second, with the new skill trees, Ogryn received new benefits from blocking and pushing, which is how we use the shield. The second part of this video is a full mission walkthrough in Auric Damnation with random people. And you can watch me play with this build to see how it plays out in action and all that I explain in the guide. By the way, I don't heal once during that entire mission. The difference between a good Ogryn player and a bad one is noticeable, and in this video I'm going to try and share all the main points of how to play correctly, as well as demonstrate them to you in play. Okay, we have a lot to go over, so let's start with the build. Okay, so let's start with the obvious. As an Ogryn, you're big. And I mean really big. Now by itself, that fact shouldn't affect you that much and it's easy to just forget about it. But that's because you're viewing the situation from your perspective, not your teammates. Here's what you need to understand. If you stand in the middle of a doorway, no one can see anything beyond you and your beautiful muscular buttocks. So this leads us to rule number one with the Ogryn. Don't block the doorway, don't stand in front of teammates. This is the number one thing that distinguishes good Ogryn players from bad ones. Now let's expand on that concept a little. Positioning with the Ogryn is the first thing to learn. Let's go over all the situations that can arise and how to position yourself in them. The obvious thing is that you don't want to stand in the middle. The middle of the hallway, the middle of the doorway, the middle of the line of sight of a veteran behind you, doesn't matter just don't stand in the middle. So that means you always basically want to stand to the side. Now the question is, which side? And you might not think that it matters, but it does. So the thing I'm going to talk about now doesn't actually have to do with blocking your teammate's line of sight, but your own. We use the shield in this build, and the shield is held in the left hand. Even if not actively blocking, the shield still takes up a decent amount of your screen and can sometimes block enemies from your view, especially when you consider again that you are so big in comparison to them, so they're going to look smaller to you. That means that the left of your screen is always partially blocked to you when using the shield, and so this automatically makes it so that we want to stand to the left side where we can make sure there's only a wall to our left and not enemies. This opens up our visibility a little bit with a shield. 
When pushing hallways, like I said, stick to the left side and hug the left wall. This lets your teammates know intuitively where to position themselves to have line of sight on enemies. Don't run in the middle. What happens if I have to go through a doorway? Well, obviously you go through it, and once you cross it, you guessed it, you go and hug the left wall again. What do I do if I'm holding a doorway where enemies are coming through? Just stand to the left of it and not in front of it. Leave line of sight for your teammates to shoot through the door. You have a lot of range with your melee attacks and this is never a problem for you to do. If you are actively looking for specialists or using your ranged weapon, move backwards a little and stand behind your teammates, not in front of them. You are a lot taller than them and can see above their heads. If a teammate is firing at enemies and you have to cross the line of fire, slide through it, don't run through it, as you want to make yourself smaller to not block the teammate's line of sight or shots. If you're shot in the back by a teammate because you accidentally blocked their line of sight, immediately dodge to the side. There are only two situations where you want to intentionally stand in front of a teammate. One, they're targeted by a sniper and you're trying to block the shots with your shield. Two, they're doing objective or reviving and you're trying to block shots for them. That's it. Rule number two for playing Ogren. Never ever use your special action with the shield that makes it stationary. Okay, actually there's a couple of exceptions to that, but the point stands. When the game just released, I saw a ton of people do this. As Ogrins, they would just stand in the doorway, drop the shield in stationary position, and stay there like that, doing nothing. Nowadays, I don't see it as much, at least not in Auric Damnation, but in any case, don't do this. We intentionally build the shield to have enough stamina and block efficiency. If you have good positioning and stamina management, and I'll talk about stamina management in a minute, you should never have a problem pushing towards enemies that are firing at you while blocking and crowd controlling any type of enemy. If you just stand there with a shield, blocking and nothing else, you're literally useless to the team and have no impact in the game. I'll explain exactly how to approach different types of enemies as a tank in a little bit. There are, again, only two situations where it's acceptable to use the stationary mode of your shield. One, a gunner is unloading on you and you ran out of stamina and now you have no option but to block. While blocking in stationary mode, it does not take any stamina for you to block. Two, you are tanking a demon host for your team. You can watch for that in the gameplay section of this video after the guide and you'll see I never use the stationary shield mode once during that entire mission. Okay, so if you're not supposed to block, what do you do with the shield? Well, you are supposed to block, but you block with the shield held in your arms and walk with your legs at the same time. I know that as an Ogren, multitasking can be a problem, like shooting and counting at the same time. That's why our guns contain either one bullet or 300. But we should be able to manage to walk and chew gum at the same time. So, always move while blocking. Actually, sometimes blocking isn't even necessary. As the Ogren, you have access to perks that give you 25% of your toughness back when using a heavy attack. So if you chain heavy attacks, you can almost always top off your toughness to fall. This is very useful to do actually with your ranged weapon, but I'll explain why when we get to that part. The second thing you can do is slide. This doesn't mean you don't need to block, but it means you can advance towards gunners quickly if they're shooting at you by sliding towards them in between blocking their shots. A lot of the time though, your job is simply leading the charge by walking towards gunners while they're shooting at you with your shield up until you can clear them out one by one. Another thing to mention about blocking is that basic ranged grunts, meaning not the big guys with the machine guns, but the non-elite enemies, will be taunted if you block their shots with the shield, and this will force them to run at you and attack you in melee range. This allows you to clear out a lot of ranged enemies for your team even from a distance. If there are too many ranged enemies in front of the team, it's okay to just stand in the front while blocking for a couple of seconds to taunt most basic ranged grunts to come attack you. This can help soften up enemy fire for the following push. When it comes to blocking, you need to pay close attention to your stamina. This means that sometimes if you are about to push a large group of gunners, you need to hide behind cover for a second to regenerate your stamina to fall. It also means that if you're out of stamina, you can't always just continue to sprint, but sometimes you have to switch to walking for a couple of seconds. If you run out of stamina while blocking, the block will break and you will take damage. If you get in a situation where you are out of stamina but need to block, you can do two things. One, start using heavy attacks immediately to keep regenerating your toughness. Two, use the stationary mode with your shield until you can get your stamina back. 
Pushing will also drain your stamina, which is something to be aware of. Okay, now let's talk about pushing. As an Ogryn, you have insane impact on your attacks and enemies are a lot easier to stagger. This is something you should get used to, as even your basic push is stronger than other classes. Push does a bunch of things for you, and it's important to learn to use it properly in this build. In the mission walkthrough, you'll see me using it all the time on enemies around me. First, the obvious thing is that the push will stagger enemies and interrupt them. This will also work on elite enemies like shotgunners and ragers, even without doing damage to them. Aside from the crowd control, the push can also allow you to pave a path inside a horde for you and your teammates. The second thing the push does is apply 40 to 60% more damage taken debuff to enemies. So if you push all enemies around you, they all now take 40% more damage. You can also use it this way to debuff them before your attacks. Look at the Mauler. If I shoot him with a kickback, he takes a little over half of his HP. If I shoot him again with a kickback but now push him first, the gun will one-shot him. That's roughly a 60% damage increase. The third thing pushing does is that it taunts enemies, which not only keeps them off of teammates but also groups them up for you for easy AoE attacks. The fourth thing we get from pushing is that it reduces our ability cooldown and also gives us back our stacks of feel no pain, which provide damage reduction. All this means that you want to constantly push enemies around, especially if you have your ability on cooldown and if not all enemies around you are taunted and debuffed. You still have to maintain your stamina when you do this, so a general rule of thumb is that if you have more than 50% stamina, give enemies around you a few good pushes, and if you get to 30% stamina, give it a second to regenerate a little. Obviously, if gunners are shooting at you, you need your stamina to block their shots, and you'd want to reserve your stamina in that situation. Okay, so let's talk about our gear. With the slab shield, stats on the shield are very important. This means that you want to look for a shield with high base rating, close to 380 as possible. It might take you a while until you can get a shield with enough of the perks and blessings that we need here, but the stat priorities are basically as follows. You want to get close to 80% defense and close to 80% crowd control. Crowd control would be stagger and attack speed. Damage is obviously damage, penetration is damage to carapace and flak, Cleave damage is nice to have, but it doesn't need to be perfect. For the perks, you want block efficiency and then stamina. Block efficiency is the more important one here. For the blessings, we only have four options. Skull Crusher, which debuffs enemies to take more damage when they are staggered and hit by you. This is absolutely a must-have. I personally like Thunderstrike for extra stagger. It's not really necessary, but again, we only have three other blessings to choose from. Brutal Momentum I don't much see the point of, because we don't necessarily use the shield as the main horde clear weapon, and a lot of our damage comes from bleed anyways. Confidence Strike gives you extra toughness on attack. It's not bad and you can certainly use it, but personally I don't feel like it's necessary because we have more than enough toughness regeneration right now. When it comes to our ranged weapon, we have two choices here. You want to either use the kickback, which is what I recommend, or you use the rumbler. You can see that I have pierce on both of them, which allows you to cleave through more enemies when you use the melee attack, which is the special of this weapon. Now, this attack on the gun counts as a heavy attack, which means it also applies bleed on enemies. If you use the kickback, the most important stats are damage and stopping power. Range is gonna allow you to hit targets that are far away from you. Reload speed is gonna make your life easier and mobility is gonna increase your sprint speed. The perks are not that important here. Reload speed, however, is very nice. If you can get damage to flak armor, it's really good. Damage to unyielding and maniacs would probably be a decent choice as well. Damage to elites would also be good in this weapon. Flak is first priority because it affects maulers, half of the ragers, and also gunners that are the main targets with this gun. When it comes to the blessings, the second blessing I have right now on the weapon basically does nothing. There are two blessings that wouldn't be terrible on this gun, which are Punishing Fire or Full Bore. When it comes to the Rumbler, in this build we don't really use the Rumbler to damage Ogrens and Carapace armor. The shield does most of the work and the shield has a lot of stagger, which means that we want to keep Ogrens crowd controlled with the shield because it's overall better for the whole team. This means that if you use the Rumbler, its main function should be area crowd control, especially for ranged enemies like gunners and shotgunners. Therefore, Blast Radius would be the most important stat on this weapon for maximum area control. After that, Blast Damage, Penetration, Ammo is very important 
important and mobility again is sprint speed the best perk on the rumbler is probably gonna be carapace armor damage damage to elites is good reload speed is pretty nice as a second blessing on the rumbler we take shattering impact this allows us to increase damage to crushers this is gonna help out our team but honestly from my experience it doesn't really have a huge impact also again remember that the main way in this build that we deal with crushers is by using the shield now before someone asks why not use the ripper gun with can opener because at least on paper it's so good against crushers the reason for that is because i think the gun is not amazing generally just for general use it also doesn't offer us anything extra that we can't already do unlike the other options with the kickback and even rumbler additionally the shield is already very good at dealing with crushers by staggering them keeping them knocked down and applying a 60 percent extra damage taken debuff on them this means that my job is not necessarily to kill them myself but rather to keep them disabled, keep them from attacking my teammates, and keep them debuffed. And my teammates can finish them off. Also, the shield already does a decent amount of damage to crushers, especially with the extra rending that we get. With the kickback and the rumbler, I can swing the gun around and use it like a melee weapon, and this does provide me with extra functionality because now I have a really good way of dealing with hordes. For your curios, you want all your curios to look like this. Max health as the blessing, block efficiency, stamina region, and toughness. The reason we take toughness over max health, even though I have it on one of my curios, is because of diminishing returns. So you want all your curios to basically look like this. Now let's go over the skill tree. This might look a little weird because I have some points to the side, but trust me, this is very optimized. I tried a few different variations and I think this is the best one. These two nodes give us 25% toughness back when hitting an enemy with a heavy attack, either a single enemy or multiple enemies. Soften them up allows us to apply a second damage debuff on enemies when hitting them. This node over here is just extra toughness. Loyal Protector taunts and staggers enemies all around you, and with this ability we take the cooldown reduction. This reduces your cooldown when you stagger an enemy. This also applies to push, not just damaging attacks. The alternative would be to apply another damage debuff on enemies when you use the ability, but trust me, in Dark Tide, defense is more important than damage. There's no point of having more damage if you can't stay alive to actually do anything. This applies bleed stacks on enemies when you hit them with a heavy attack. And then having bleeding enemies around us gives us up to 60% damage reduction. This gives us rending, useful against carapace and flak. And this node is toughness damage reduction. All the simple nodes with toughness damage reduction on the skill tree, like this one, stack additively. This means that the more of them you have, the stronger they get. That's why you'll see me taking this node here and this node here. Blocking or pushing enemies taunts them, very important. I would love to take Bruiser, but it's not worth the extra points, and we already have a way to reduce our cooldown here. Feel No Pain gives us damage reduction, then pushing enemies allows us to get our damage reduction stacks back, this allows us to keep our toughness up, and then we have some more toughness regeneration. So let's go over attack patterns with the shield. The best attack pattern to start with will not be the heavy 1-2, which would be chaining the attacks, but rather using the first heavy, then animation cancelling with the block, and then using the first heavy again. So you use a heavy, then you block, then you use a heavy again. If you do it fast, it looks like this. You can test it out for yourself, this attack pattern has both the best damage and the best stagger. And you can also clearly see it right here if you go to the table that shows you the damage distribution with this weapon. The only time I want to chain my heavies, so that I'll be using heavy 1, heavy 2, chaining them, is if there are too many elite enemies around me and I'm losing my toughness far too quickly because I'm getting shot at, then you want to chain your heavies because the attack speed is going to be slightly faster, which means you're going to regenerate your toughness slightly faster as well. We don't use light attacks with the shield and there's basically no reason to use them. Push attacks are really good, especially if you hit the headshots with them. The initial push, if it staggers, also is going to apply the damage debuff first, so the actual attack is going to do more damage. This is great sometimes to follow up on the push with extra damage from the attack. You'd see me use it a lot on gunners, but also enemies like ragers. With the shield, push attacks are not considered heavy attacks. Therefore, they do not apply bleed and they do not regenerate your toughness. So if you use a push attack, you want to chain it into a heavy attack that will regenerate your toughness, just to make sure that your toughness is topped off, in case you took any damage during that time. 
if there is a horde of enemies or just a large group of grunts in front of you, even if they're ranged grunts, but there aren't many elites around you have to deal with, instead of using your heavies with a shield, you can switch to your kickback and swing it around to clear them all. This will build up bleed on them, which will do a lot of AoE damage to them, but also provide you with up to 60% damage reduction, which is very safe to play. So even if you get hit while doing this, you're hardly gonna notice any health lost. Swinging the gun like this also has more attack speed which regenerates our toughness quicker. One thing you have to consider here is that if you want to use your special action with the gun and also be able to dodge at the same time like I do, you may need to change some of your keybinds. I use dodge on V and special action on the weapon on mouse button 4. If you're fighting a horde and you hear or see a specialist coming, what you can do is keep swinging the gun and when you can see the specialist and want to shoot it, quickly aim and shoot. When you reload back your gun, you can swing first to give yourself some room. Instead what you'll see me use a lot of the time is simply pushing all these basic enemies and knocking them down to the ground. This stops them from attacking me but also taunts them and forces them to run at me. This gives my entire team and myself space to fight the higher priority targets like elites. If my teammates then don't finish off the basic enemies, I can do that with the melee of my gun or chaining heavy attacks. Just to quickly touch on how to use Loyal Protector, our active ability is a good defensive tool. You generally want to use it as an interrupt, to stagger enemies in AoE, for an opening to get close and personal with them, and introduce their faces to Mr. Shield. It's good to save it as a panic button for occasions like if gunners manage to strip all your toughness away. The ability will taunt all enemies in range, so you can use it to peel off enemies from teammates if they're doing objective or get surrounded by elites. You can also use the ability's taunt to force enemies to follow you while pushing forward past them to the next group of enemies. Enemies. They should be pretty harmless while taunted and following you, and this allows your team to safely deal with them while you are pushing ahead. If you lead your team like that, it becomes an unstoppable snowball of death. Remember that spam pushing is the fastest way to get your ability back when on cooldown. How to deal with elites. We already talked about gunners and how you want to block, walk up to them and push them. Shotgunners would be pretty much the same with the exception that if they are taunted and you are in melee range of them, they will switch away from their shotguns and engage you in melee. Shotgunners usually come in large groups and you can just push all of them at once and knock them down to the ground. If, for example, you're fighting a group of shotgunners by themselves and there are no other priority targets or elites around that you need to deal with, you can switch to your kickback and swing it around to apply bleed to them. This is gonna be faster and easier than using the shield on them. When you first engage with ragers, they're usually easy enough to just push. Then you can use push attacks on them and heavy attacks. They will get knocked down, take a lot of damage and take a lot of bleed damage. With Reapers, you want to make sure that you can stagger them so that they don't knock you back. If they're just being annoying, you can also switch to your kickback and shoot them. This will usually knock them down to the ground. If you see Crushers, even if there are multiple Crushers, you want to chain Heavy 1 with the animation cancelling to keep them staggered and debuffed. Don't forget you can taunt enemies by pushing them with a shield. If there are only one or two Crushers by themselves, you can continue attacking the same Crusher with the Heavy until it goes down. If a crusher is attacking a teammate and is about to use the heavy slam on them, you can shoot them with a kickback to quickly knock them down to the ground. This doesn't do a lot of damage to them, but it's a great way to interrupt them when they first show up. If you immediately attack them with a the shield when they're knocked down, this will also apply the damage debuff to them from the shield. Bulwarks. If you can get behind them, use the kickback to quickly build bleed stacks on them with the swings of the kickback. With enough bleed, they will also get staggered. Annual dig enemies like bulwarks and reapers take a lot of bleed damage. If the bulwarks are aggroed to you and are facing you, just wait for them to provide an opening by using their heavy attack and use your heavy attack yourself after you dodge it. Just like with the crushers, you can also shoot the bulwarks with the kickback. Just make sure to hit their back that is exposed and is unyielding and not the armored parts of their body which are generally carapace. Instead of rushing at gunners with the shield, you can also quickly use the kickback to interrupt them. Like I showed you, you can also use the kickback on maulers to do a lot of damage, also to pretty much any other elite like ragers, reapers, whatever. Specialists. Hounds obviously want to push, you can also just shoot them. 
with snipers. The kickback does a lot of knockback, so even if you can't kill them in the first shot, you will knock them down. The safest way to engage with snipers is to block and tag them and let someone else on your team who can deal with them finish them off. If you want to shoot them yourself, it's safer to block their first shot and then switch to your kickback and shoot them. With trappers, bombers and flamers, if they're not in melee range, just shoot them. Mutants, if they run at you, you want to use your heavy on them. If you want to get rid of a mutant fast, you can also shoot them with a kickback and this will take two shots. Also, remember that you can knock back all enemies with your ability. This is especially useful if there's a trapper behind you and you can't get away, or if a pox burster is about to jump on you. It has pretty good range and you can also use it to save some of your teammates. Like I said, you can also use the Rumbler with this build. Just make sure that you have Pierce on it as well. The Rumbler has a lot of range and you can even snipe with it. The problem with it is that the shot is a projectile and not hit scan, like the kickback. That means it's a lot harder to aim with. With the kickback, it's a lot easier to just aim and shoot. And because the kickback has pellets, accuracy is not that important, even from range. Also, even though it does okay damage to crushers, it has very bad ammo economy and I recommend using the shield to deal with crushers anyways. The main strength of the Rumbler is its area crowd control, but again, because we have the ability to taunt now, it's not that important anymore. If you want to try it out yourself and get a feel for it, you can definitely do that, but I still recommend using the kickback. The ability to quickly get rid of specialists with the kickback, in my opinion, alone is worth it. All right. Well, I hope we're all ready to be big boys now. The next section is a full mission walkthrough with the build on Auric Damnation. If you want to see how this build plays out in action, keep watching. Happy purging! Okay, so let's go through a mission with this build. This is played on Auric Damnation with random people through matchmaking. This build is really designed to be played at the hardest content and you'll see that I never actually feel in danger. In fact, the game feels like it's played on easy mode. I don't drop below 90% health throughout the entire mission and I don't use an active heal once. We also finished the mission in 24 minutes, which is pretty fast. This all shows you the strength of this build. Now you might say that this is a singular mission that I picked specifically, but from my experience, this is really typical of how the build is played. You should try it for yourself and see. Going through enemies feels like butter and the only thing that can end your mission is if all your teammates have peace for brains and you rage quit at them, not actually dying. In fact, even though we have a giant health pool, I hardly ever take any damage with this build. Alright, see how I'm hitting them with heavy attacks? If you're shot at and taking chip damage, you want to do this to keep your toughness up. As you go through the door again, make sure that you go left immediately so that you don't block line of sight. See how I'm getting in the middle of all of that? I'm not actually getting hit by anybody because I'm pushing and staggering everyone around me. If you actually want to do damage for Horde Clear, attacking all these basic enemies, you want to switch to your gun and swing it around. If any gunner or specialist shows up, you can shoot them in between the swings. With your active ability, you can save your teammates, like right here when I'm using it to push the Pox Burster away from my teammate. But of course, I can't save them from the way that they actually play themselves. Like I said, we end up finishing the mission in 24 minutes, which is fairly fast. Like you see, my teammates are all dying, so you can't say either that I got lucky with the teammates and I just have a good team. This build just feels very strong because you empower your entire team and this can create a snowball effect. We're basically just pushing forward the entire mission and this allows you to finish the mission very fast. The playstyle really reminds me of how it used to feel to be a tank in World of Warcraft, where if you were running a dungeon, you weren't just playing as another role, but effectively being the party leader as well. Let's 
Let us vanquish these heretics together. <laughs> yeah, Ogrins have short legs and can't jump very well. For the righteous tarry not when their blood boils with hate. I didn't understand a word of that, but you seem happy enough. With bulwarks, you don't necessarily need to damage them. If you can turn them around and expose their backs to your teammates, they can finish them off. You just need to taunt them and keep them facing you. There are a few ways to deal with gunners. You just want to make sure that you interrupt them first, so they don't continue to shoot at your team. The kickback has a fair amount of ammo reserves, so don't be afraid to use it instead of needing to close the distance on enemies. You can see me here again knocking back the Pox Burster. I generally want to push them away, but I didn't trust my teammates to not blow them up on me. This is a great example of why I like the kickback so much. It's super flexible and gives us a great way to deal with specialists. It's usually better to try and finish the objective fast rather than to try and get all the enemies first. They're just gonna spawn forever and it's a waste of time. My role in the team is not to deal with specialists and I'd rather that my teammates do it instead, but the kickback actually allows me to do it pretty effectively. Watch for the way that I'm managing my stamina here. You don't want to just sprint forward and let your stamina reach zero. If you're fighting just a few basic enemies, it's sometimes better to use the heavy attacks with the shield to have your shield handy in case you're being shot and need to block quickly. It really depends on the situation if I use the shield or the gun for melee. When you're carrying items, you don't want to just sprint. Reserve your stamina, push enemies if needed, and change slide instead of sprinting. I want my teammates to push the other button so that we can move forward. I kind of have to do this objective by myself though. If you're in a situation where there's no threat to you, but your ability is on cooldown, you can spam your push on basic enemies to get the cooldown of your ability back. Now this is very important, don't try this at home. If you're gonna climb through a window as an ogre, make sure to only eat two rations before a mission instead of the usual five. If mutants are running at you, you usually want to use heavy attacks with a shield. You can also just shoot them though, because it's easier. This would depend on the map, but some ledges that overlook a larger area can make for excellent choke points. Shoot enemies around to aggro them and force them to run at you and climb. Done for. Go 
With bosses, you usually want to keep them taunted to you, block if needed, and use heavy attacks on them. No one else is dealing with specialists, however, and someone needs to do it. If a teammate is firing and you need to cross the line of fire, I like to slide when crossing it to make myself smaller. The most annoying thing with Ogrins is that they stand in front of you and block your shots. Here I'm preemptively pushing for when the Pox Burster shows up. You have so much stamina with a shield you can push for days. I also knocked back the Pox Burster that came from behind. And of course, cool ogrins don't look at explosions. I got blown up so many times by teammates that I just don't trust anybody anymore with barrels. If a sniper is far enough away, you wouldn't be able to kill it in one shot with the kickback. You will still get knocked down by it, so it's worth shooting them anyways. If you're waiting for specialists to show up, you can keep swinging at enemies in melee with the kickback. With Beast of Nurgle, it doesn't matter that you are a tank, you want to stay away from it because it can eat you. You can still hit it with a couple of heavy attacks to apply bleed. That's a dot 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 moment right here. All these enemies are gonna follow us, so there's no need to stay here and kill them all before moving forward.
Here I'm trying to keep all the elites taunted with a push. And just because you're a tank and can take a lot of punishment, doesn't mean that you shouldn't make sure that you're in a good position first. It's safer to let the specialists come to us here, and I don't really trust my teammates that much. Once we cleared all the specialists, we can push forward again. With basic ranged grunts, you don't have to chase them down. If you block their shots with a shield, they'll get taunted and come to you. I have to block some of the line of sight here because there's nowhere else to go. But usually if you get shot in the back by a teammate, it means you're doing something wrong as the Ogren. The kickback doesn't do a lot of damage to Carapace armor, but it still does a lot of stagger. So if a whole bunch of crushers show up, you can shoot one of them to knock him down first. With grenades, you want to save them for really bad situations, where it looks like your entire team can get wiped out. You can see that I still pay attention to position in the teammate's line of sight, even when using the gun. Positional doorways is also very important, and you never want to stand in the middle of the doorway. I recommend having tag bound to only tagging enemies. This allows you to spam it in situations of bad visibility, otherwise you'd be super annoying to the rest of the team. This is the only situation where I actually block in front of other teammates. There's a sniper and they don't really have room to move. This is map dependent, but you usually want to do the objective before you heal. If we're gonna fight here anyways, we might as well clear first and then heal. You see that I don't really care that much about killing basic enemies. You just push them a couple times to knock them down, then move forward.
if I taunt all enemies around, it gives more space for my teammates to finish the objective. You can see that even on this narrow staircase, I'm still mindful of not blocking teammates' line of sight. Ogren on a search for some wild biscuits. Gotta look for them snackies. It looks like the dog wants to get some treats too. Dark Tide servers are kind of laggy. You oftentimes get hit in the back by enemies even though it looks like they wouldn't be able to reach you. You can easily peel them off of you with a shield by pushing them back before moving forward. This will also taunt them and force them to follow you and will group them up for you. When you're doing relay station, after you get the first switch, you want to move to the right and wait at the first computer console. Then keep going right, following the rim of the arena, until you complete the objective. I'm pinging this console with the eye because I'm hoping one of my teammates will go there and wait. Unfortunately, nobody seems to listen to me. And there you have it, Ogre in tank, no active heal the entire mission, hardly any damage taken. Now go purge some heretics. Cheers everybody.